ready to take on the world and a few of our questions. Trader Alan Nuckman and Trader James Romali join us now for Traders Unplugged from the Flora CME Group. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Topic number one, breaking bank. J.P. Morgan has a number of legal issues going on, but one analyst says the bank is actually worth 30% more if it's broken up. Would you buy or sell this stock? Well, I'm a buyer, especially of stocks that have been under severe distress. And looking at this company, they've got a lot of problems, a lot of issues, but they've sold off 10% from the highs. I'm leaning on this 50 level. 50 has been the pivot since April. You can buy an in the money 45 call for February, have about seven months, and your break even is only a dollar higher. Right, so you know the stock has come off its highs quite a bit here, about 10%. You know, I see 48 as a very key level well, here. That's only $2. Until there, I want to play it nothing but flat or short. You know, the banks have led this rally higher, and they're going to lead a sell off if we get one here. If I have to own a bank, I'd rather own Wells Fargo. Technically, I'm looking for the stock to get to 80 eventually. Topic number two retail wreck. Bill Ackman, the big investor activist, sold off his stake in JCP at a loss. What would you do with this stock? Right, so playing any retail stock in this market right now is like playing craps at the casino. We just don't really know. You know, there have been stocks that have held up really well. Back like to Coors, school. Urban. JCP has not been one of those stocks. It's been a weak stock all year long. There's been extremely bearish order flow in the equity option space. They're implying that this thing is going to go below $10. Well, looking at this, I love stocks that have this kind of capitulation event. This guy lost $500 million with the stock, but buyers stuck, stepped up and took out his 18% uh, stake in the, in the company. So I think there's some value here. Because of this high volatility, there are options plays, but it hasn't been below $10 since 2001. So somewhere in here, JCPenney's going to be a buy, and there's serious money that's getting into it right now. Topic number three, Tech Talk. The NASDAQ came within one point of a 13-year high. Is this a last gasp or a sign of more strength here? I think it shows leadership of the technology sector. If you look at the P.E. ratio, it's down at historical lows. It's only around 13 for the P.E., which is a 30-year low. So I think there's more upside. But keep an eye on Apple. As Apple gets stronger, that lifts the Nasdaq because it comprises about 10% of that Nasdaq index. Right. I actually completely agree with Alan. You know, we saw tech kind of lag in the first part right. of this year, and it's really starting to come back, of course, being helped by the participation of Apple. Apple's starting to come back a little bit here. You know, the valuations look good. The only thing is, I think in the short term, there is some downside risk if the market rolls over once we get our uh, taper information. I want to talk about the market in general. The VIX did not make new highs when the market made new lows here this week. That could be a sign of some bullish divergence, and the overall market can make a nice move up from here. Well, here's your bonus round question, guys. It's for Labor Day. Which of these statements are true? true about Labor Day. Uh -oh. Labor Day originated in Canada. Labor Day started in the U.S. in 1882 in New York City. The first Waffle House opened on Labor Day in 1955. Well, if it was in Canada, it'd be L-A-B-O-U-R. So the answer is no. And I think it was. I think it's the Canada one. B. I pick B. They were all true statements. Oh, man, every time you get me. Every time. Don't worry, Alan. There's always next week. First Business continues right after this. Thank you.